Hi everyone, my name is Julia Gray and I'm a writer of books for children and young adults. My latest book is a partly fictionalised but deeply researched account of Ada Lovelace, specifically her childhood and her teenage years. It's called I Ada and it's published by Anderson Press. Because Ada was a woman of such exceptional scientific importance, we thought it would be a nice idea to mark the publication with a mini podcast series, which we've called On the Radar. And each fortnight I interview a different woman with an extraordinary career in science. I was lucky enough to get to talk to Dr. Sharma Rahman, who's a scientist, artist, creative technologist, and futurist, also the first sitarist explorer to perform in Antarctica. Sharma's the founder of NeuroCreate, which uses AI and neuroscience in order to enhance human creativity. I spoke to Dr. Suzanne O'Sullivan, a consultant neurologist based in, at the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery. Uh, Suzanne won the Welcome Book Prize for her first book, It's All in Your Head, which tells the stories of people with psychosomatic illness. Her second book, Brainstorm, focuses on her experiences of treating people with epilepsy. Dr. Vanessa Lowe fell in love with biology when she read all 56 books in a series called How My Body Works as a Child. She studied cell biology at the University of Manchester and did a PhD sponsored by the British Heart Foundation at UCL. She now works at Queen Mary University, looking at ways that the function of the heart can be improved. Professor Tonya Vincent is Professor of Musculoskeletal Biology at the Kennedy Institute and Director of the Versus Arthritis Funded Centre for Osteoarthritis Pathogenesis. And Dr. Susanna Bidgood is a cell biologist, immunologist and expert in infectious diseases. She currently works at the MRC Laboratory for Molecular Cell Biology at UCL, where she is a postdoctoral research fellow. All of these women very different, with very different experiences, very different daily lives, and yet they all share an enormous passion for what they do and a great devotion to educating others about their jobs, especially young women. So on the subject of women inspiring and educating others, I would like to read a short extract from I, Ada, in which a teenage Ada is uh, tutoring two young girls in mathematics. And she's uh, using a book called Practical Geometry Method in order to elucidate. General William Pasley first wrote this book to help engineers. I explain as I opened that good soldier's treatise, Practical Geometry Method. Just think, Livy and Bella, if you study hard, you could use your knowledge to build bridges or railways or even in warfare. Bella wrinkles her freckled nose. Ada, how could you suggest that? Why would we want to do any of those things? Chimes in Livy. Well, I counter, why wouldn't you? More nose wrinkling and feminine disgust. I can see that they are, in spite of their protestations, rather amused that I have suggested these outrageous possibilities. Because we're girls, they chorus. I am only teasing them, but the thought lingers long after the lesson is over. Why should we women limit ourselves simply because of our sex? Why should we say, this is not for us, nor this, nor this, when there are so many things that could be done? If Jacquard had been brought up to believe that he was not capable of designing a loom that would revolutionise the factory system, if Stevenson had never dared to dream of steam engines, if Babbage hadn't broken things apart under the benevolent eye of his mother to see how they worked, then none of those inventions would exist today. The thought sparks oddities in my Ada brain, all the magical potential that would surely have gone to waste, and all the magical potential that must surely be lost every day because little girls like Bella and Livy Gosford do not believe that a bridge would be theirs to build. Thank you very, very much indeed, Finding Ada, for inviting me to send you a video um, and long live Ada Lovelace Day. <laughs>